humanity is full of variants. So I can't yeah. control that. I can't eliminate that. And my process has to pivot depending on what patient I have in front. You're not going to get to that. And I think that's where the translation of DMAIC into what for healthcare is more PDSA cycles, that plan, do, study, act cycle allows for more variance in the types of people you're dealing with, more variance in and all the workflow things that are going to happen that are going to be different from patient to patient through your process. What happened? You looked at it, you, you did a lot of fancy stuff, but did you change human behavior? One thing we noticed was that a follow-up appointment, usually we relied on the patient to call in to make that appointment. And we try to change it so that before they left the visit, they make that follow-up appointment. The most important thing that you do as a physician is listen to the patient, address their concerns, be there for build the relationship. If you're concerned about how many check boxes there is in bright futures, you're not concerned about the mother, you're not concerned about the child. And that's a travesty because it's really taking the pediatricians and the family doctors out of the game of relationships and out of the game of autonomy and turning them into check boxers. I just want to make sure like how you're feeling and things like that. And then I uncover something brand new. I want to kill myself most of the time. I did my job and then I figured out what's going on and I sent them to the emergency room. Every hour you're spending with a patient is two hours on the EMR. And so that level of administrative burden combined with the low reimbursement, it doesn't inspire people to want to go into it when you're carrying that much debt and you've worked that much harder. You talk 40 minutes about depression, it's not reimbursed as much as that earwax removal. Yeah, so, so it's a payment problem and the payment mm -hmm. problem distorts everything. It's a payment problem that what I call the support clinicians are not paid enough. So the dietitian, the psychologist, the care coordinators, the social workers, the pediatric endocrinologist, the pediatric neurologist, the pediatric mm -hmm. behavioral health subspecialist, they're nickel and dime. The problem is that we spend too much money at the end of life. We spend about three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars at the end of life for futile care. And until we address that, we cannot change the cost of care in the U.S. As long as we talk about fee for service versus value based no care, what we're doing is they're distracting us so that we can argue about nonsense and we're not changing anything. There never yeah. seems to be balance in life. Either yeah. you have young kids and you have no time or the kids grow up and they leave and then you're sad that, that you're never around, but it just never seems like it's a perfect fit. Work-life balance is just gonna be different for every single person. It's just how much you value one thing over another. You just cannot have your clinicians go home to their families. That's their time. Yeah. You can't have them open up the bottle of wine, cook for the meal after they work, and then sit in their bed with a laptop. Your technology should be good enough for you to be done when you go home. <laughs> That's it, done. I chose to be a physician and I'm like, I'm going to help Johnny on my porch. Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't contribute to my burnout the way that I need to go on my, my computer and type progress notes right now. That's the problem right now. Burnout. No child should live in poverty. Every child should have access to a decent education so they can pursue their dreams. I don't care what insurance you have. Come on down. That's the way it's supposed to be. We made the system too complicated and inefficient. Yeah. And it's not serving our society value yeah. days. They sent kids from the emergency room with a meter dose inhaler. Yeah. And no arrow chamber. Or they give them the arrow chamber. They never tell the parent that they got to wait till the kid takes 10 breaths. Yeah. I, I have them come in with an inhaler and I watch them do this. And then all the smoke comes out of their mouth, right? They're not getting any treatment. No wonder they're landing in the yeah. ER. Yeah. We're the rock stars of medicine. Everybody. We're the most popular physician. You could be touching the next garbage collector. Or you could be touching a phenomenally talented artist that will become world famous. And you have no clue. But yeah. the 